Okay, here we are back again with the Stinson L1. Uh, the last time, if you remember, the left mag was dead when we tried to run it. And we thought about it a little bit, and I'm gonna let Andy tell you what we've done to try for the next round. Well, what we've done, um, this engine runs what they call a duplex magneto. It doesn't have two separate magnetos, one for the front set of spark plugs, one for the back. It runs one single magneto, two separate coils, which feed into two distributors. Uh, as Kermit said, the, the left mag had no ignition on it. It was dead. Um, what we were, what we had to prove at that point, whether it was the left-hand distributor that wasn't working or the left-hand magneto wasn't working. Um, the left-hand magneto fires the rear set of plugs. So what we've done, we've fed the high-tension output from the right-hand magneto into the left distributor and the output from the left magneto into the right distributor to see if the fault on the engine swap sides. If the fault swap sides, we'll know whether it's either the mag or the distributor. That's where we're at now. So we'll do another engine run and see what happens. Let's go check it out. Okay, so here we go. Still the left mag. So if it's still the left mag, the left mag is feeding it to the right side, so it's the left distributor. Okay. Okay. That's, that was now, the point of the explain exercise. Explain to me something. When you were explaining that, you said that the there's there's one mag but two distributors, but there yes. but within the mag there's one, there's, but within it there's a left and a right. Yes, there's two coils. It's basically there's one armature, right. with two sets of coils, and the output from the left coil feeds the left side which okay. is the rear plugs. The output from the right side feeds the front plugs. What we've done is swapped them over. So right. it's the same mag. If it's still dead on the same side, then it has to be the distributor that's killing it because it hasn't moved. Right, okay. So now the left-hand right, distributor good. has to come off. Okay, so, fuel's uh, off, master's short, off, mag's off. Short, quick, and concise. Easy. Okay. So, all right. Round four coming up. <laughs> Each magneto runs through its own distributor. Um, so we have, knowing that the engine actually runs and assuming that the magneto hasn't developed a problem in itself, which it could have done, um, we've basically been mixing and matching to see what happens. Now we know from the first run that the right-hand magneto, great, dead pen, right-hand magneto through the right-hand distributor works the engine, that ran absolutely fine. Right. The left-hand magneto through the left-hand distributor didn't work at all. Right. So what we've then did was crossed um, the right-hand magneto to the left-hand distributor, and the left-hand magneto to the right-hand distributor. This is going to get very messy very quickly. Um, that made absolutely no difference. Um, the right-hand mag ran through the left-hand distributor. So this is good. The left-hand mag did not run through this the This right is all good, so that's probably so our problem. So this became the problem. Now, what we haven't, what we need to ascertain that we know the right-hand distributor is good because it runs through the right-hand mag. Connected to the left-hand mag, it doesn't run. Therefore, the problem is somewhere between here, and we know this is good, 
on this point, if you will. It's possible that the magneto itself has developed a problem, and I believe that Wayne has just been through and checked the points and pulled, you know, pulled the dollar bill through it, the traditional, you know, old-fashioned mechanics method. Um, and I to basically clean the yeah, clean essentially them. clean the contact breaker yeah. points. Um, yeah. If you don't need to use a ten, a dollar works just fine. Yeah, a dollar works just fine. Yeah, well, don't don't waste your money on that. Um, points file complete waste of time. Don't do that. At all. <laughs> dollar bill's the way to go. Um, the most likely thing now was that lead between the left hand mag and the left hand distributor, which I believe has been checked. Everything's been cleaned. So at this point, we do another run. So we so um, he buzzed this out, and this that, is good. That's my understanding. Yeah, okay, I think okay, that's okay, what we've right. done. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. So. I haven't actually been that close to it for the last couple of weeks because I've been working on the Curtis OX5 engine for the Jenny. Um, so, you know, um, I'm kind of picking it up from scratch now and we'll, we'll see what it does. Uh, if this has made no difference, then the Magneto becomes suspect, which is unfortunate, but there we are. So, anyway, we'll see. Seems like it's got a lot of compression. Yeah, the motor feels nice. Yeah. That's probably good. One more for that. Okay, it's still Test it, or do you got to have a stand to test it? Uh, it has to be well. Theoretically, it has to be tested at X number of RPM under a certain compression load. I mean, I can spin it by hand and see if we get spark out of it. But yeah, well, that's the next thing to do. Just to... God, we cannot win for losing, can we? <sighs> Welcome to the world, plan. wonderful world of vintage airplanes. <laughs> The last time we took the Stinson L1 out, we've been having problems after the engine rebuild to connect the, um, uh, sorry, replace the bent connecting rod. We couldn't get it to run at all on the left magneto. Um, you never really look for the, the most obvious things first. You kind of tend to start with the simplest things. It's human nature to do that. Um, Wayne had investigated the continuity between the distributors. We'd We'd swap the right mag to the left distributor, the left mag to the right distributor. That didn't really change anything. Um, we checked the feeds into the distributors from the magnetos respectively. That didn't make any difference. So in desperation, for want of a better word, um, we decided to pull off the left magneto, which by my reckoning had actually already been rebuilt. Um, apparently I wasn't entirely correct in that, and Paul maybe could take up the story with that one. Because um, although I did fit it to the engine, it was given to me, witness the shiny new paint yeah. as, a, as a rebuilt man. Well, when we were doing the work on the engine, when Andy finished the engine, of course we had to have all the accessories overhauled, carburetor, fuel pump, and uh, all the uh, different things that attached to the back of the engine. And I was going to send the mag out for overhaul, but then I found this mag sitting on the shelf that was yellow tag that had actually come with spare parts inventory that came with the Stinson tri-motor that the current bought a number of years ago. So I thought to myself, you know, that's a good mag, it's yellow mag, it's going to save us some time. That was most of the thing, also some money, of course. It takes a long time when you send a mag out for overhaul to get it back because there's very few people that do this. Savage Mags is the only one, and this, if we send this out, it's probably going to, or any mag out, it takes yeah, months, it takes to months. Get it back. So I thought, speed wise, uh, so I took that mag and put it on the engine. And in all and fairness, the airplane flew it, great it, with it. It did fine. It did fine. <laughs> um, this, where we are now, only really this problem only really arose after we'd done the mechanical repair with the um, with the connecting rod replacement. Um, again, so why you know 
not trying to uh, trying to avoid the issue, but it wouldn't be the place that you would start. You would be you would think it would be something that you dismantled in doing the connecting job repair and put back on the aeroplane, perhaps incorrectly or not as it was, something had become disturbed and created a secondary problem. Um, when we, as going back to, we pulled the magneto off in desperation to check it, and we can do a little demonstration to show you what we found. So what we've done here, this is the, um, this is our suspect magneto, the one we've just taken off the aeroplane. Um, I can tell you a little bit about it because it's unusual. Um, normally you would have, on any uh, aviation engine, you would have, um, you have two magnetos, two completely separate magnetos. Um, on, a, on a radial engine, one fires the front plugs, one fires the rear plugs. On a flat engine, one fires the top plugs, one fires the lower plugs. On an inline engine, one will fire one side of the airplane, one, one will fire the other, the exhaust and the inlet side of the plugs, if you like. The Stinson, or the, I uh, should say, the R680 Lycoming engine has what they call a duplex magneto, which is essentially one magneto with two coils. Um, I can only assume this is an economy. It's not well loved in the industry, I have to <laughs> say. It's, um, it's possibly justified that it's, uh, <laughs> it's not it's not people's favorites it's hard to set up um, there's always the the issue that if the uh, if the the central part of the magneto fails you lose absolutely everything uh, the point of dual ignition or having running two magnetos is you've got a backup the engine won't run as nicely on one mag as it will on two but it certainly will run at which point you can go home and you know have tea uh, if this magneto fails you do actually lose everything um, Having said that, I've never been around one that failed, so you know, I guess it's done okay for the last 50 or 60 years. Anyway, so we have a single magneto, this is the one we removed from the airplane, nice and shiny, um, has dual outputs. This is the left hand side, this is the right hand side. Uh, we're doing a very simple test here, we're going to run the magneto um, with, um, with an air drill, uh, we can control its speed from slow to these mags don't really start to give a good spark until they're running at, you know, a couple of hundred RPM. I can't remember the exact number, but um, certainly for the comparison test, I think it'll it'll do fine. So Paul's gonna Paul's gonna see if he can get lit up. Um, so what we're gonna do? This is the one we removed from the airplane. Let's get this one out of the way, and we'll just spin it up, and hopefully, if you can focus in, you'll see that we. We have a spark, it's maybe, I can go a little bit quicker than that, maybe a quarter of an inch long, but it's a little bit intermittent. Um, worth, worth noting that when a, an engine is actually is running, um, the uh, compression and the combustion tend to want to blow the spark out. Um, so a weak spark here could well actually be no spark at all at the plug. Um, this is a magneto that we pulled out of our storage, one of our storage bays, um, untested, well it's tested now, um, no, no guarantee, certainly not been rebuilt. Uh, we fire this one up. You can hear it, and if I run it faster, you can back out all that way. So this is only still at idle speed at this point. Go back to the other one just for fun. We'll go back to our suspect mag. Now we'll do a direct comparison. See the difference? Sparks, weak, 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 weak. Um, you pull away. Yeah, pull away nothing. I don't, my personal feeling is that whilst that left side of the mag is running, I do not think that would run the engine um, with the compression and yeah. pressure Pouring inside the engine, if you will. I think it would just buff that spark out. Um, the reason I'm saying that on camera is that if we send the mag out and it still doesn't run when it comes back, then I won't have quite so much egg on my face. But um, my guess is that something has gone or is failing inside this magneto and that that will ultimately cure our problem. Ta da!
Uh, we found out uh, after a little bit of uh, research that the mag we had put on there was had been yellow tagged. We pulled it off the shelf, but unfortunately we never had it tested, so we're thinking that might have been the case. We've since had it overhauled, and uh, we'll see what happens. Since the, uh, the all these attempts that we did last year trying to get the airplane running, um, I've lost a few of my aircraft department. And uh, lo and behold, uh, Jack McCloy, who actually used, used to be my original AI, uh, has come back and he's going to help us a little bit. He uh, went ahead and installed the mag. And Jack, come on here, let me introduce you. So this is uh, Jack McCloy. As I said, Jack was my original AI when Fantasy of Flight opened. And uh, great to yeah, have you coming back and helping. Yeah. And uh, let's see how it goes. Let's go. What, tell them a little bit about what you did. Well, we put the new mag on, and uh, it's an overhauled mag. and it, it, Looks a lot better than the one that came off, and uh, did a few little changes here and there on it. But otherwise, it's 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 in really good shape. And I think it's going to go fine. Here we go. Clear top. started a lot of uh, oil and yeah, exhaust. Yeah, it's, it actually got really bad there for a second, but then it started Yeah, it, up, it so. burned out. It's just been a lot laying in there. Yeah. Good job, okay. Good deal. Well, you know, other than a little bit of a leaky primer here, 
Yeah, which, it. but it just hadn't had fuel in it, so the seals yeah, probably dry. swell. But uh, anyway, I'd say check it over, button it up, and yep, go fly. fly. Maybe do a Carmi cam one day. <laughs> what do you think?